Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 452 at scavengerlife.com. Hello, how are you? Welcome to the 21st century. It's a fireside chat (laughs) for the 21st century. So we would be, I think it would be silly to talk about having a business online without talking about this virus that's going around. The coronavirus? COVID-19, coronavirus. Yep. Uh, I know it's like... Right now, just kind of hitting public consciousness, although I think a lot of people have probably been following it some. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think the issue is because there isn't a whole lot of transparency or, you know, people aren't really talking about it yet. Like, it it can be super scary and, like, end of the world kind of stuff, which I think is silly. Um, Right. So, yeah, it just needs to be talked about and people should be able to ask any question they want and get answers and then it kind of, like... People are smart and can deal with their life. But I think it does show, like, I mean, this is a very global world now. Yeah. I mean, it's always been a global world, but even more so now, it's impossible to just close down borders and, like, be safe from the world. Yeah. Um, You know, and that goes along. I mean, this reminds me of, like, climate change and stuff. It's like, you know, we just have to, like, work together to make this happen. Uh, So some things that I've been reading about is that number one this isn't like ebola you know this isn't like right everyone's gonna die uh it's worse than the flu Mm -hmm. i've read that uh it's basically from the studies they've done and it's still early days it's like 10 times worse than the flu does it, that it, seem it, like a lot to you? Yeah, because the last time I had the flu, it was really bad. Yeah. Well, I mean, 10 times as far as like uh, the amount of people dying. Dying, okay. You know, Not the like, severity of the actual... Right. Yeah. I, I actually read there was like a good... Um, there was this woman, a student who was in China, and she actually got this COVID-19. Oh, and really? she actually wrote like a thing about what it was like. Yeah. It was basically like five days. And for her, it sounded like... The, the flu, flu, you know, yeah, body like, chills, vomiting. She didn't vomit; it was just like real achy. And this is a uh, so the coronavirus that that that's like a, a, a medical term is basically a common cold. Like that's, okay. so, we all get coronavirus. Okay, this is just a different strain of it. Gotcha. And basically, it's a lung thing. So that's really the danger: is that like. If it's bad, it can fill your lungs up, get pneumonia. Mm-hmm. And that's why uh, they say that, you know, that's why they're still trying to get a handle on it. They say a lot of people have probably been having it mm. over like in China and other places and maybe even here in the States uh, that just no one is knew about right. it. because They people, just thought it was some other thing. Because they say about like 80% of people seem to get it. And recover from it. Not a problem. Like, they don't need a a hospital. Right, okay. 20% need some kind of help. Yeah. And then 10% die. Die. Okay. And in China, the big thing they were finding is most of the people dying were older people with problems or men in China who smoke Smoke. a lot. Whose lung lungs, problems. whose lungs are not very strong to begin with, you know. Yeah. And they say interestingly, like small children are fine because they're like healthy and like children are having little viruses all the time. Right. So uh, you know, but then they say that the children though can be carriers, and so like if you have like kids and old people together, yeah. So, uh, and I guess the thing that you know people are worried about is that number one we don't have a vaccine for it right they say it's going to be about a year away and uh just the overwhelming of hospitals like if everyone gets it at one time just hospitals just will be have a problem like dealing with everyone freaking out and going to the hospital yeah so that's why everyone's like just be prepared to like if you get sick stay in your house don't go anywhere right and then if it's really 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 bad Maybe. You yeah. go to the hospital. Right. I mean, they, you know, yeah. So anyway, we're not, I mean, I'm not an expert on any of this stuff, but just like anyone else I read, you know, and I just encourage people don't read like Infowars because like they're the ones that like, it's the end of the world and this is a societal collapse. Right. You should just read, you know. There's a lot of zombie apocalypse right. talk going on. Right. It's, uh, you know, it's more something to be aware of. It's something we should all be prepared for and, uh, you know, follow up, like, as more information comes in. 
But as how will it affect online sales? Because this is about that's what this right. podcast is about. I mean, some folks actually think it may actually help online sales because there might be more people at home. Not going out to shop. Or, to yeah, stuff. and maybe having to self-isolate or having to uh, work from home uh, so they'll have more mm-hmm. time to, like, buy stuff online. So, well, also, uh, like, there was some uh, delay or they shut down shipping to and from China. So... <laughs> You know, we get a lot of stuff from China. We get, you know, anything on Amazon is coming from China, you know. And for so. sellers, that's really interesting. You know, this means that those of us that sell funky, weird stuff, like, yeah. we have access to that at auctions. And, you know, it's it's basically a d- 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 domestic product that yeah, we sell. Yeah, sure, exactly. Those people who sell, like, wholesale or private label, right. like, kind of the Amazon way. Uh, Private, yeah, exactly. I was reading, yeah, one article where some guys like, yeah, uh, I can't get my product anymore. Like drop like, shipping from China right, directly and, to Amazon warehouses right, and whatever. Like those people are going to have problems. So, uh, it's yay for those of us. That are yay for weird. USA weird sellers. And we actually had a great day uh, yesterday, right? Yeah, we sold like four hundred dollars worth of stuff of the funkiest, weirdest. Most craziest variety of Kookiest, stuff. yeah, like long tail items. So I don't know. That's just totally kind of an arbitrary footnote. Yeah. Um, okay. So last week, one thing someone called in about a PayPal eBay glitch where he he didn't say why he was doing it. And so people were saying, oh, I think this is why. He said he emptied out his PayPal account. Yeah. And then someone wanted a refund and it like wouldn't pull from, from his, his secondary account, and so he was having to go back and forth. And people were saying that's a glitch, that that shouldn't happen. That a lot of people actually do that because we were like, just keep money in your PayPal right. account. People are like, no, I like to keep my account zero. Right. So it hits my credit card. So it takes all shipping from a credit card. Right. So I get credit card points, and then I use the points for flying, which makes a lot hotels. of sense. I was like, wow, people are really smart. Yeah. I know that people do this, but I'm just like, oh, yeah, that's why people do it. Uh, Because, yeah, I mean, like, we probably spend a couple thousand dollars a month in shipping. And so I think we just don't do it because, I guess, having to empty your PayPal account every time you want to ship, you know. uh, It's just a pain. Yeah. Yeah. So. I wish it was just an option to be like, pay for all my shipping through a credit card. Right. Period. End of story. Instead of like. Instead of like. An extra step, and then this whole thing with a refund, or right. I'm paying with something with my debit card from PayPal, and right. there's no money in there. It's kind of like our eBay fees. We just automatically make our credit card right. pay for our eBay, eBay fees, fees. Yeah. automatically. There's yeah. no like fooling around. So I don't know if it's like a permanent glitch, if it's a glitch that's been around a long time, but hopefully they'll fix it. Yeah. Anyway, I just I wanted to update people on that. Um, so kind of something I was thinking about today this week was yeah. if you're someone brand new coming into the online world like a little birth baby a newborn baby yep it's interesting this is probably where you could you could sell online and never sell on ebay yeah like and i was just thinking about that and it's and it kind of came up because there was a couple that joined the uh our uh, forum this week uh who said that they sell shoes yeah. So they go Goodwills, thrift stores. They sell like, I don't know what it is, like 100 pairs of shoes a week. I mean, wow. crazy. You know, they're really all in. And they mainly sell on Poshmark, mm-hmm. they say. And then Macari yeah. a little bit. And then yeah, a Poshmark. little bit on PayPal. But basically PayPal? all... Sorry, on eBay. On eBay. Through PayPal, yeah. Uh, but mainly they just sell on Poshmark. And uh, that's so interesting, you know... We, we've talked about all these other sites, but it's true. Especially yeah. if you do, like, clothing. I think the clothing uh, uh, t- uh, category, there's definitely all these other sites are eating away at eBay. Yeah. I mean, we've been talking about that for a couple of weeks now where that's the theory. It, you were at someone's house yesterday where the TV was on and you were just telling me you saw, like, three ads for Mercari. Like, Get on your phone. Yep. List the stuff. Here's some clothes. Yeah, they even have, it's like a little tagline. It's like, uh, uh, they say like, uh, photograph it, sell it, make money or something. Right, you right. Know, something like real, real simple. Catchy. And it was just like a quick 
you know, advertisement where some ladies like in her bedroom taking picture a pair of shoes. Right. It's online, and then like you know, she's like dollars in her hand. Yeah, you know? exactly. Um, but those places seem mainly focused on clothes. I mean, Mercari, you can sell anything on there. Can you? But yeah, yeah. Or or Facebook. It seems like some people are just making businesses purely mm-hmm. on Facebook. I mean, I know right. a guy for a while. Yeah. I don't know if he makes a living at it, but he sells only on Craigslist. So he likes to just go right. and buy mainly like bigger, weird stuff. Yeah. And sell like it Craigslist. just on Craigslist in his driveway, you know. Look, that's um, an all cash business. Yeah. No fees. Right. But you have to be willing to do that work and yeah, sure. It's it's a different business model. And you know, and really, you know, we started this podcast basically about ebay like we call ourselves ebay scavengers right because at the time ebay was the game right even there wasn't any of these other platforms yeah even back in 2013 amazon was actually just kind of starting where people were sending stuff to amazon i guess they've been doing it for books but that was just when people were starting to yeah they hadn't really had their fba like third party program so it's only been in the past several uh uh he hears now that people have been selling in other places. Right. Um, and really, all that uh, matters is that people find buyers. So if you yeah. find them on another site, cool. Yeah. You know? Uh, anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. Oh, and then the other thing is, so my uh, it's nephew turned nine and we bought him yep. a gift, kind of like a scavenge gift. Totally. Hopefully... They see it as a positive thing. We we actually sent him an old iPod. Like an iPod Nano? Yeah, like a you know, old quote unquote old, you know, probably six years old and filled it with a bunch of uh, music. Yeah, I think it was from two thousand thirteen. And I thought that was kind of fun that uh hopefully he sees that as It's like, like retro retro electronics. Yeah, it doesn't have a touch screen. Right. It's got like this little the, yeah. uh, the scroll it's wheel. It's basically just an MP3 player. That's right. it. Right. It doesn't do anything else. Well, I wanted to send him a CD player with CDs, <sighs> but we we don't really have a computer that burns. Okay, CDs so well. I do have a computer that burns CDs. That's how old one of my computers is. But I just was getting all these errors and it became such a pain, like this old technology and we had a CD player that like wouldn't read them all the time. And we were like, we just have to get like a little iPod and put MP3s on it. Like, what are we thinking? That's retro enough for this kid, honestly. So it will see how they like it. Yeah, I think he'll like it. I I think it'll I think it'll be neat. Yeah. Uh, okay, so another thing about eBay, so the 2020 spring seller update came out. Oh, really? Wow. Yep. I, did they email us? Because I, I missed that completely. Yeah. It, it came into our, like... Our messages. Yep. I didn't get it in my email. Messages. I think, and we were talking about some on the forum, too. I think the big thing is there aren't really a lot of big, that any of us could could, could, could see big changes. And right. if anyone is a new, eBay does this every spring, summer. And fall, and now I think fall. now. Yeah. It so used to only be twice a year, I think. They they send out a message and they like, you know, they're just trying to like fix some things. They add new policies. They collapse things, yeah. you know. And if you're, you know, depending on eBay, it's good to keep up with, with these things. Because in the past, there have been some pretty significant changes that make us right. change Right. The way we, you know, we all have a process of selling on eBay. Yeah. And they can change those things. So there, we didn't really see anything really There big. wasn't anything that seemed significant to mention. I mean, I see, and I haven't really, uh, you know, kind of gone into any of these. They say they have a new, a multi-person account access okay. for orders. So right. I guess, have they had that where you can? Uh, they started it last year, mm-hmm. but I hadn't seen a way to do it really where... Yeah, it's it's like you can have your employees sign in but not have full access. Yeah. I, I don't know how to do it. I need to Maybe look at it. We should try that finally, you know, because yeah. we do have helpers and be good to just give them, you know. Yeah. Does it uh, say the the thing about eBay that's funny, I was looking something up about how to exclude someone from like the unpaid item assistant because someone was like, Oh, I can pay in four days, is that okay? It was so hard to find that information, that mm. accurate information, and the steps to do it. 
that, you know, for things like this, I'm like, am I even going to be able to figure out how to do it right now? Right. I don't know. Like, do they have documentation? They should. They yeah. probably do. I need to look at it. Uh, they now have, like, an instant white background of photo editor. So I guess... Oh, really? Is that in the listing? It must be in the listing. I'm not page. sure where it is. But, you know, we were talking online about how... It's really mainly, guess, good for people who sell, like, kind of commodity or new items. For, like, a vintage cool item, it looks good when it's on a wood floor or... Or a, just a natural background. Yeah, I always think it's weird when something's just on, like, kind of, it's, like, floating in flat white. Now, it... I also think it looks good because there's a lot of sellers that we see on our forum where they do have a, a light box or a white background, but it just looks more natural. It's not, like completely cut out right and i think that looks fine but uh, hopefully what people were saying is i guess on amazon they require that and we hope that uh on ebay they don't ever go to like they require yeah. all items to be on a white background right and then i guess terra peak they're they're further because ebay t- bought terra peak which is like a pricing history yeah in a yeah site uh, that they're emerging Terapeak more into the seller hub. So Okay, that's so interesting. Terapeak.com is going away, and I right. guess all those features will somehow go into the seller hub. I've used it a few times, especially when you can't find sales in the last 90 days. It gives you only a year, which I think is okay. I know WorthPoint does like many 10 years or something. Right. But for me, it kind of makes sense. Like a year's worth of data is like... Is a pretty good amount, you know? Yeah. Um, and then they just said more, like, uh, improvement to customer service. I guess, like, they're trying to, you know, streamline when people do fake item not as described God, cases. It happens all and, the time. Um, you know. At, like, literally that. almost every return. I'm like, yep. They said item not described, and it's exactly how I described it, and I don't know what else to say. Yeah, and so hopefully. So anyway, those are good. They seem like it's more like additions, like okay. cool, better things for sellers yeah. rather than when they like take things away or, or add fees or yeah, whatever. Exactly. So that, that's good. Um, it's got to be like that sometimes. You know? You're yeah. like, this was okay. All right. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, and, and I guess everyone... Is wondering, I guess the the managed payments where they right um, eBay managed payments where they make everyone get on there. I guess that that agreement with PayPal ends, I think August of twenty twenty. Twenty twenty is it twenty twenty or twenty twenty one? It's got know. it's got to be soon. Yeah, I should know that. I think it's twenty twenty. Anyway, um, it's gonna be it's gonna happen at some point. You know, people are slowly getting on it. I yeah. don't know if eBay uh, makes them, but people have been. Voluntarily, I guess, yeah. switching over. And uh, right. I think we're just. Gonna I'm just going to wait. Gonna wait. We are forced to do it, and hopefully they work out all the kinks. And I'm know. just going to wait till, till I have to do it. Right. Right. Like, right. PayPal works for now. I can send stuff through global shipping. You know, all the things that people are like, all of a sudden I could do none of these things. And I'm like, I don't want I that. I think what's interesting, there have been some people that have come on the forum and they've, you know, that they've been a part of the manage payments and they've been ex- sharing their experience and i hope this isn't permanent but i thought the whole point of managed payment was is that you sell and you get immediate access to that cash you know managed payments yeah and mm-hmm. what they say is mm-hmm. once you it takes four days oh. for it to get transferred to your bank account so well that's what's great about paypal right like you have instant access to that especially if you have a debit card right uh you know you you are like paying for your groceries that's what i do yeah um on my debit card so but at the same time you know if you sell stuff on amazon or if you for us airbnb or home away I mean, you're waiting for that money to go into your account, Mm -hmm. direct deposit. It takes a few days. That's just what it is. If you transfer money from PayPal to a bank account as well, sometimes it can take a day, but it can take longer than that on the weekends or whatever. Right, because it's business. Because, I mean, like, for people who are not in the States, they're probably thinking it's so crazy. I don't know why in the States they do this thing where, like, I mean, it's all electronic, Yes, yeah. it's, it's all. It should be instant, instant, but it's still this like they stick to this f- old format where like 
if it's on a Friday afternoon, yeah, it doesn't get it won't get Monday. processed till Monday morning. I mean, yeah, no, you're like, yeah. what the heck? Right. So, I mean, people in Europe and other countries have uh, wire transfers that don't have fees. Right. If you want a wire transfer here. You're talking 30, 40 bucks. And it's like you have to go to the bank and it's like paperwork. It's, it's just this, you need like your all these like yeah. codes and stuff. It's right. like, yeah, it's nuts. Well, that's why honestly Venmo is, PayPal owns Venmo. But Venmo is interesting where right. you can pay someone through Venmo. Immediately. Immediately. Even if it's not in your Venmo balance in air quotes, mm-hmm. it's in your bank account. Yeah. They're covering that for you. You're right. I, it's I, interesting. I assume that's just because it doesn't actually go through the bank. I mean, like PayPal is fronting that cash. They are. And Which then, is weird. But. And then PayPal deals with the banks to get the everything. Because when I pay out. someone through Venmo, I did it yesterday. Um, you know, I don't see it go out of my bank account till like Monday. You know, right. yesterday was Saturday. Um, you know, it's not. But the person gets the cash. But the person's like, I can spend this right now. Immediately. Yeah. Right. I don't know. It's yeah. it's weird. I think things are going to change. You know, that's why PayPal did buy Venmo. I'm sure. Yeah. Um. You know, we talked about this the other day. They're buying a different market. It's the the millennials and the whoever's below them, a Gen Z, you know, who are like, do they have a bank account? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they just have their phone. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's funny how we talk about generation, was it Y generation? I don't even know what they're called. Millennials. As if they're kids. I mean, these people, the older ones are like... They're in their 30s. In their 30s. I mean, I'm on the... Look, I was they're born... They're in their late 30s. I was born in 1979. <laughs> right. So I am definitely right in the middle Duffily. of... Duffily. Duffily in the middle of um, Gen X, which right. is like basically you and like yep. some of our older friends. Right. And to right on the edge. To like my sister, who's 35, who was born in 84. I'm like, right. you're so a millennial. Right. Like I've met people born in 1989 who don't think they're millennials. And right. I'm like, yeah, let me tell you something. <laughs> you're a millennial, 100%. Stick with Gen X. We're like, I'm, I'm, yeah. pretty, I'm pretty much on the Gen X side, but there are lots of millennial things that yeah. I'm like, oh, I relate to you on every level. Right. So yeah. Anyway. Um, okay, so let's move on to yes. our numbers for the week. So we still sell on eBay. Like eBay w- we're like eBay old school. number one. We're like the old old beards on eBay. <laughs> we, we, don't, beards. we don't sell on other platforms as of right now, so this is it. Okay. Yeah. So and we sold forty nine items. It felt like that. I was shipping a lot. Quite a few things. Yeah. Seven items a day basically. Yeah. Hey, average. I love it. We grossed fifteen hundred dollars. Not that bad. seems low to me. It seems low. That includes yesterday? Yep. It's because we did not sell a whole lot of high dollar, high dollar. items. Like That $400 shirt was last week. Yeah, I'll tell you right that now. That got paid for. So we were averaging, yeah, yeah like $30.71 yes. was our average selling price. So that's really the difference. And you know? I was taking, you know, I would have some high-end bag or purse up for a hundred dollars someone offered me 60 i'm like go for yeah, it we, i am selling this 60 bucks i love that bought right. for a dollar it's one of those things yeah. where anyone that has a long tail store you get excited over the amount of of the money that it you make right. but you also get excited over the fact that yeah. some weird thing you've had for a long time sells and I find both are equally exciting. Right. This was a week where, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I mean, these days it's fifteen hundred bucks. I'm happy. Yeah, I'm happy. in a week. But I was. It was a super exciting week just because we were like, holy moly! Yeah, this item. For instance, our highest dollar item was only a hundred dollars. So that yeah. was our highest dollar, yeah. and it was this a a letter that was signed. By a ballerina. Yeah, like some lady. I don't know. We found it in a, a box British somewhere. British ballerina. And somebody, we added up for maybe twice that or something. And like yeah. someone says, how can you verify that this is true? And we do, you know, we just admit. If I we got found it, it in a state sale of this We person. cannot authenticate it. Yeah. You know? uh, and the person says, well, I'll give you $100 if it can't be authenticated. Great. No problem. I'll take $100 for something I found yeah. in a box that no one knew was there. You sold some salt and pepper shakers for 75 bucks. I like how you said you. Yeah, because... Well, because I took the offer. That's your... Like, I mean, it's also one of those things I don't think 
I would have picked up. Oh, I found it. Yeah. Yeah, So I found it at a thrift store. You know, when you're at a thrift store and you're looking at the wall of glass and ceramic and you're like, this all looks like it should go in the recycling bin. You know, you're like, I'm not seeing anything special, but these caught my eye because they're super 1980s Memphis style. Mm -hmm. Uh, new wave Memphis style. So if you look it up, Memphis style from the eighties is actually from an Italian design firm. It's not from like, you know, Tennessee. Right. Um, so it, it, it's this sort of, it's becoming more popular again. And, um, it's this pair of little salt and pepper shakers, yep. totally wacky. It's signed by a designer from yep. back then. And I was like, I'm putting over a hundred dollars on these a hundred. I think I did 150. Yep. Um, someone offered 75. I paid no problem. You know, 75 cents for them. Right. So, um, and those another, were fun. and another thing that was all you was this old plate. You sold it for yes. $60. I got it for 50 cents. So, Again, looking at the the wall of ceramic plates, you're like, oh my God, there's so much stuff. I cannot distinguish one thing from another. It all just looks like junk. But then something will will stick out to you. You know, you're like, oh, that looks very old. Actually, this looks like it's from the 1700s old. It was marked on the back 1790. I don't know if that's the date of when it was made or the date of like this company in, you know, Staffordshire, uh, England, that's when they started making that transfer, you know, whatever, right. but it was definitely old. Yeah. So how much did I sell that for? 60 bucks. 60 bucks for that yeah. plate. No problem. Yep. I'll take 60 bucks. I bought it. It was 50 yep. cents. That's again, when I think that's, it's your thing when we go to a thrift store and there is that wall yeah. of glass. And I mean, I'm just like, I, I see nothing. I kind of, but I get that. And you do go in and find these little yeah. old plates. I just look like something's got to stick out to me. I mean, right. there's there is so much stuff there that I'm like, I see nothing of value. I would actually put this in the recycling bin at this point. Yeah. Um, but then a little a little mark or a little pattern or you know a texture a color. I'm like, ooh, this is interesting. And then you look at the bottom and it's either from Target or it's from, you know, an era that's really what it is from, you know, and, and to me, that's fun. Um, I never, ever thought that I would be buying and selling glass and ceramics. Right. We, we see that on my life. I never, but I, I really like that. And we actually actually. sold a handful of other little plates and ash. I was, I was packing a lot of stuff like that actually this week. And so that's something which makes me feel good and justified for buying all that stuff. Cause I buy it all the time. I'm like, Mainly, I should and, stop buying this. And just so it's clear, we buy it because that's the kind of sellers we are. We like to not put a lot of money into inventory. Yeah. So that's the thing that I think people overlook, don't want to deal with yeah, shipping, it's storage, too long tail. Yuck. It's just, you know, yeah. it's hard to tell. Like it right. takes time to tell what seems a worth it. Like that isn't. ashtray. I have this stack of their Haviland, um, f- you know, French, right. but they have a print from Germany. You know, it's like all these German cities. And it is so long tail. You're just right. like, what? Because, look. But I sold one this week. It makes sense. There are a lot of sellers out there that are like, I just want to buy stuff that's going to sell. Mm-hmm. I don't want to fool around. I don't want to hold on to this for a year, two years, three years, five years. I mean, I just... Let me find something. I'll yeah. pay a little, you know, I'll pay up for it as long as it's going to sell relatively quickly. But how do you, you'll never know. And I get that. I yeah. mean, well, people know. Some people know. Yeah. Because they, they do searches yeah. and they have smaller stores and I get it and that's fine. We're the different kind of seller. We, we talk about this endlessly, but I just think it's just really is like a state of mind and you just have to choose your state of mind as a seller. Yeah. We like to go, I bet 50% or more of all those plates and glassware and all that stuff we have on our shelves. I mean, I'm not sure if it's going to sell. Will it ever sell? I mean, okay, we're, so we're but, taking a risk. But here's the thing. So I had my helper take a bunch of photos of some of the little delicate things that we got at the auction recently. And there was enough room on a shelf, like an older shelf, of stuff that had sold that I'm like, okay, we can actually put this stuff right. on that Older shelf. I wasn't making a new shelf of ceramics. I'm like, there's enough room. Right. 
of, you know, like once stuff sells, I kind of consolidate and like move things to fill in those spaces. But there was enough space to put new inventory. I'm like, that's a good sign. Right. right? We, we, we actually have our shelves of these plates and glassware and yeah. we haven't added to it. We've been able to keep right. just putting a new stuff on there because enough stuff is selling. Yeah. But I think that is a thing that, you know, people think is scary or it's ridiculous the way we do it that, you know, we're, we're putting time into putting stuff on eBay that we just can't be sure will sell. But for us, it's a low risk, uh, you know, yeah. way to do it and if it sells it's like only bonus so um just one other thing i thought was cool we sold talk about long tail we bought a big box of beer cans you know empty like, beer cans from the basically the 70s and i don't know we probably spent i spent 10 look, bucks on it i bought i bought it for seven dollars seven dollars and there were like 25 or 30 cans i feel like 40 i mean it, it was like a big box and we've yeah. already sold a bunch of them. Yeah. We just sold two to um, one person for $45. Yeah. It's just like, it's great. It's like, yeah. I mean, those are definitely a long tail, but yeah. like there are collectors who are like, I want this very specific Coors can yeah. <laughs> from 1971. So scavenger of the week. Uh, I think you're the one that went to like a little thrift store and you bought some. Yeah. I bought some stuff there and one, so I paid $30 for a piece of furniture. It's an old typewriter table. Usually I don't pay that much for stuff, but I looked up typewriter tables. I've seen them before when I'm looking up solds for typewriters back in the day because I'm not going to sell typewriters anymore. Um, and people pay, if I'm willing to ship it, I got to find a box for this thing. People pay 100 sometimes $200 for those tables. And uh -huh. I was like, ah, oh, I'll pay yep. 30 bucks for it. They wanted 45 I think I talked them down. I was All like, right. would you take $30? Um, they said yes. I also find that, found this huge piece of artwork that I think I'm going to keep, actually. It's this signed print, like limited print from 1965. It's very abstract and weird. It is cool. It's a photograph of a right. person's face, but they like abstracted it so it looks... And it's huge. It's like 18 by like 36. It's framed and it was $15 nice. and I was like, that is something we would definitely put in a rental yeah. um, or somewhere. Uh so I actually kept that, which is very rare. I'm usually like, it's cool, but I'm going to sell it. I was right. like, no, this is something I would keep for my house. Yeah. So. And I don't think we've checked to see if it's by a known artist. The, so here's the deal with – this drives me nuts, man. Here's the deal with old art like that. The signature is so hard to read. You're like – and then there's no like card on the back that says the person's name. And you're – how are you going to find that? Did you cut the paper out? I didn't. Okay. Um, we should just check because you know they'll 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 put that like brown paper on I the know. back. Sometimes should, there's a card. Least cut it and then we could retape it. Yeah, if you want to. Just that's to a see. pain, but sure. Yep. Uh, okay, customer issues. Um, so look, ninety nine point nine 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 percent of buyers are totally cool. You're buying and selling. Everything's fine. Life is great. You know. Yep. We all complain about it. There's just like a little tiny. Every once in a while, buyers, it just are pain in the butts, you know, and yep. it just makes life difficult. And for any seller, the the choice is how much time do you spend dealing with those people and having to call eBay and dealing with the re repercussions, blah, blah, blah. So we got a negative feedback. Yep. We had talked about it. It's before. This guy bought like a vintage coat. He, uh, he uh, it made an offer on it. We accepted. Uh, he immediately wanted to cancel or then the next day he didn't pay for it right he says I, I want to cancel my wife had to go to the hospital you know i'm broke blah 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 it's that story we all hear like I, everyone has i'm cancer. telling you i've heard that story right. like three times as people month. buy things and suddenly they have cancer and they can't pay fine uh but then he pays and then makes an immediate return request yeah and he says oh i accidentally paid for it now <laughs> so we're like whatever Here's your money back. Yeah. We actually have to pay the PayPal fee, so we're already in the hole. Yeah. We didn't ship it, obviously. And we just blocked him. He's like, you know. Yeah, I blocked him. Not thinking. Then the next day, he's like, I actually I want to buy it. My money's okay. Let me buy it again. And he realizes that he's, he's blocked. blocked. He can't buy it. And he's sending us angry emails like, why won't you let me buy it? And we just ignore him. Like, look, you're blocked. The, the sale's done. But because he paid for it. 
he was allowed to leave feedback. So he gave us negative feedback right. that said, buyer won't deal with me. <laughs> and then you called eBay and got it taken away. Yeah. Right? I was just like, yeah. okay. <laughs> the funny thing is tell, having to tell the rep the story. You're like, okay. <laughs> Everything you just said, I'm like, I need to like explain to you the the right. you know the sequence of the events. sequence of events right. so that you understand why I'm blocking this person because you know they didn't want to buy it, didn't want to buy it, accidentally paid for it, right. opened an immediate return, right. you know. So yeah, right. wacky. Oh, yeah. and then wanted to buy it again, yeah, and left me negative. So, feedback. but the, the, they took it away. The right away. Good thing is he took it away. So, you know, and that's the thing where you always have to figure out, like, do I just eat the negative and be done with it or call? The good thing is it seemed like it was relatively painless. Yeah, I mean, the the rep understood. Yeah. You, know, you know what I've been doing lately, too? If, if I have an issue or if I need to close a return, you know, this happens all the time. People are like, I need to return this. This is not what I want for whatever reason. And they never return it. eBay sends them a label. eBay reminds them like three times because I've had to return things before and forgotten. And they're like, remember to do your label. And I'm like, oh yeah. Um, so what I've been doing is I've actually just been emailing merchant support and being like, mm. this, this return you know, is able to be closed today. They never shipped it back. There's no tracking. They never printed a label. Can you please close it? And I've been having them close it through email. Is that something new, or have they no, always had? No, I just I just never did oh. it because I wanted it done immediately. I'm just surprised. I guess I I just assume because they don't have a chat feature. They they right. did for it like a long I wish they had time chat. ago. They had a chat oh, feature, be so and they hit it. And I remember we yeah. had bookmarked the chat feature, and then it went away. But I'm surprised they 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 do email because I would just think they would just get bombarded with like, especially emails. with honestly with anchor support, just right. have chat, right? I know, you know some people talk about they go on the Facebook page of eBay and they can get well, stuff. I, I should I have yeah. a Facebook account for for our rental business. Right. I should just go on Facebook. Yeah. But so I forget what the email is. I have it again like set as one of my contacts. And I just email them and I'm like, here's the case number. This is my seller ID. Can you please close this? It should be closed today. Right. And then they do it for me. Right. It just saves me time yeah. from being like, okay, it's 8 a.m. Uh, I can call them. <laughs> it won't take that long, but I have so much other stuff. Yeah, to I got to right. pack all my eBay stuff yeah. or whatever. I mean, it's like I said, like how much valuable time do you right. spend getting something? It's removed, some INAT, yeah. you know, some item not described. I mean, closing your yeah. return is good because they're holding that yeah. money. So, and that's the thing with all these other platforms that people are selling on Poshmark and Macari. Yeah. Like, is there a system right. when there's something goes wrong between buyer and seller right. or do they just say there's no system? You guys deal with it. It's just like Amazon. You return, you know, you eat the cost. I don't know. So didn't someone on the forum this week, I don't know if this is on your outline, but didn't someone say they had a Facebook, like a potential Facebook return where someone was like, no, well, w what the person says was, so they sold a computer, like oh, okay. an old uh, computer to someone a on laptop. Facebook marketplace. Yeah. The guy took it home. Like all of us that try and sell, uh, use electronics. Yeah. You know, someone takes it home and it's just a user error. Like the guy doesn't know how to operate it. So right. they're like, I, I want to return it. So my question was on Facebook, a marketplace, is there a return yeah, how, a system? How and the answer it? is, it's like Craigslist. Yeah. Buyer beware. There's no return system at all. Right. So the person doesn't have to accept the return. But I guess Facebook marketplace has a, a feedback a system. So right. the person they could give you a feedback. bad rating. Right. And I don't know, this person that's selling this computer said they'll probably just take it back because they don't want a bad uh, uh, review. Because then I guess that would hurt their way to sell. Yeah, more. of course. So so that's the, I guess that's the way they keep people from just screwing people is yeah. the bad review. Although I do but wonder, I mean, again. I don't know. I can't even see that. Stuff, I have no I idea. Know. Can you give a, uh, a review to a buyer? I think so. And then that I don't know. And then that becomes like the old eBay where like mm -hmm. you buyer and seller could both do negative and positive right. and then there are wars that get started and you know there are sellers we know that they exist like they like yeah. they'd like to punish buyers you didn't do it right so right. I'm going to punish you and then you know 
eBay's like, well, we need to not let sellers do that because it's scaring away people that buy. Because people just it's want to buy an item. They don't they want to go to uh, war, yeah. a war with people. And I think that's what's yeah. interesting about, again, all these other places that sell. It seems all fine right. and dandy. Everything's easy. But it's complicated. A lot of it is being... Uh, is being uh, subsidized by venture capital right, right. money while yes. they grow their buyer and sellers. Right. And then at some point, they'll either sell off yeah. to a real company or they'll go public. Yeah. And then once that happens, yeah. these it's businesses like have to be run like real businesses. Yeah. No more subs, you know, it can't be subsidized. You have to make profit. Yeah. And we saw that with Etsy. Yep, Etsy. Everyone loved it because it was like this private company. Yep. Lower fees seemed easier. Then they went public. Yeah. And they've been public now for a while. Yeah. And now people complain. They're like... They're, they're changing they're, this. They're adding more fees. They're yep. becoming stricter. They have to... They want free shipping for everyone, just like Amazon. They Yeah, they just announced something where they're going to force certain kind of sellers to pay for ads. Ads, that's right. On outside sites. To sell their items. Wow. And then you have to, I guess, for smaller sellers, they have to opt out of that. If they don't, it's want to pay a fee to right. get, you know. Right. Um, Interesting. Because, you know, they, they want to make money. They have to make money. Right? And they also have to start dealing with customer issues because now yeah. they're like a public company. And so they have to build these things like eBay or Amazon has where there's a way to deal with that stuff. Yeah. So there's so, got to be customer right. service. It's right. not... I think at one point I had some question for Etsy. Was it Etsy or Poshmark? I forget which one it was where I was like, I need to like contact someone and ask them this because I don't see it on the FAQ. Right. No contact information. Right. I mean, and, and I mean, that's a way you know? to run a business, like no customers. Yeah. Service, like, you know, whatever. I yeah. mean, that, that's why I guess. Mercari, you're like, can I contact you guys? <laughs> no. Yeah. You Just, cannot right. actually. <laughs> uh, so you actually brought up something that someone had talked about. So yeah. one of the things that did change in the seller updates, and a lot of us not, are not sure exactly how it's going to play out, is that so if you have thirty day returns, yeah, there was a while where you could call eBay after ten days and close the case. Mm. If the ten, person it was ten days. Right? I thought it was five business days. Or whatever, five business yeah, days. Six yeah, six business days. So something. it was after a certain amount of time, yeah. and you could call eBay and close a case if the person didn't mail right. it, right? Yeah, yes. That is no longer valid. We cannot call eBay and close it early. They have 30 days, 30 business days. So it's open for 30 days. Open for 30 days. Because recently what's been happening is if you're like, it's been, it's, I, this is the sixth business day. They haven't printed a label. There's no tracking. They're, okay. They would close it, but the buyer could do, a, print the label, do the tracking, and call eBay and be like, I am now sending this back within the 30 day. And right. they'd reopen it. Right, right. So, right. It, so I understand why eBay is Which doing makes this sense. Because I always thought it was weird. Yeah. Like, if it's 30 days, why, why is it not 30 it? days? So, yeah. I get it. So, Atomic Star on the forum, she sells, I think, almost exclusively clothes. Clothes, okay. She sells a lot of clothes. Yeah. She does very well, but yeah. she gets very, uh, it's frustrated with people. I'm sure. Buying clothes and returning them. Item not described. And so she was asking, and I don't really know the answer, although people were trying to figure it out. So if they have 30 business days, that's really like 40 days. Right, because... Right. And then it's if like they open days. a case on the 30th business day, yeah. then they have like 10 days to mail it back, right. and then five days for it to get back to you. It's like two months. So do they really <laughs> have two months? And for her, it's like, yeah, people could just buy my clothes, yeah. which she thinks happens sometimes. Take it to a wedding, right? Then return it. You yeah. know, there's the, they do it all the time. Yeah, all the time. I mean, it doesn't happen that much to us. Does no, it? not to us. I'm saying right. in general, like, okay. like if you look up, you know, what in, my sister, she's younger than me, so she goes to weddings a lot, and she's just like, oh yeah, people just keep the tags mm. on. I mean, dresses are expensive. Four hundred dollar right. bridesmaid dress. Right. Where They're like, and back. here you go. So, uh, so yeah. I guess what people were just saying was, yep, like that's that's the way of the world. And I guess the que- I mean, the, the answer really is just don't take returns for that long. I think you can do 15 days, 15 day returns. I mean, you know, and you cannot take returns. I mean, so those are just choices. Right. 
the reason why people do 30 day returns is just to they want better exposure and search and they want eBay. Look, I have 30 day free returns. And anytime I have a problem, like we said, this guy left me negative feedback and I, you know, I accepted yeah. return and refunded him. They're like, great, gone. Yeah. eBay kind of like, makes you know, yeah. so, um, so yeah. yeah, that's interesting. You know, and it is true. Someone, I think it was my cottage was saying that, uh, my cottage, my cottage, is our my cottage being, cheese. That, that's all I know them by. Yeah. Uh, they were just saying, and I think it's true that the reason why having a long return time isn't a big deal for most sales is because most people, if they're going to return it, it's like as soon as they get yeah. it. They, I mean, I'm like that. They open it up. They're like, yeah, this is this not isn't it. what I want. Or they try it and it yeah. doesn't work. So and, you know. it doesn't really matter if it's 30 days because most returns happen in that first week. Yeah. And then after the first week, if it's not returned, you're good. Yeah, so we, pretty I mean, much. You could basically have 60 days. Yeah. I guess Atomic Star is just worried about the yeah. people that are purposely gaming the... Yeah. The they system. know the rules, right? And again, I guess it's just like all of us who sell online, you just have to like weigh right. the uh, a risk in... Uh, well... It's, reward it's like you said, 99.99% of people are fine. Yeah. They're like, yeah, I got it. Look, I even hear, I even hear from people where they're like, this isn't really what I wanted, but I'm keeping it. You're like, oh, you're cool. Yeah. Like, what am I supposed to say? Right. Great. <laughs> Great. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's go to the questions or calls that people sent in. Okay. You can call our voicemail line. The phone number is 540-407-8486. You have three minutes to leave a message. You can also email us an audio file from your phone. Our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com. Hi guys. It's Keith from uh, Western Mass. Called in a bunch of times before. Hey, I have a question for you. You guys always um, refer to your goal of $1,000 to live on uh, net sales a week to make on eBay. How many items did you have listed on eBay where you feel like you were regularly hitting that $1,000 a week? And I know you don't hit it every week, and I know obviously some weeks you're over 2000 but what was the amount of items you had listed on eBay where you were regularly hitting that 1000 items or $1,000 a week? All right, thanks for the info. Keep up the great work. I look forward every Sunday or Monday morning when I'm packing up, hopefully after a great weekend of sales, to listen to your podcast. Appreciate everything you do. Thanks, guys. Bye. Oh my God, this is this, this gonna, is like the ultimate question. So this is going to open up a can of worms. Yeah, and it's because if you sell like we do, where you're just getting weird items, especially a vintagey stuff, it's hard. To, you know, you it's hard can't, to put a number on you, it, right? You can't be like a, a, like a, a mathematician scientist because it's just we're long tail. Every item is different. It's different if you were to have a store where you were like an Amazon-like seller where you had like eight items with like a lot of inventory of each one. And then you could do those numbers because you could see a pattern like, you know, yeah, I'm selling steak knives and a barbecue fork and like yeah. a coffee maker. And, and you're seeing the numbers yeah, move. I'm selling five a day here. Yeah. Like we're just, it's well, random. That, okay. Sorry. Real quick. Yeah. I will say, in the early days... <laughs> yes, I was about to say this. And again, this has changed over time. Yeah. But back when we first started, it seemed about 2,000 items is what we needed in our inventory right. where we were making steady, steady sales and making enough money to pay our bills. I think today that may have changed because there are more people selling online... Um, and that was when we were just selling clothing, right. like a majority, we have some little things here and there, uh, housewares and stuff like that. We had one tiny shelf in our house that had like mugs and like vases. And then we just felt like we got bored. So, you know, the evolution has changed. We used to say, we used to say this, get 500 items up as fast as possible. Now, I still think that's true because once you bust past, like, you know, I've talked to people and they're like, oh, I have 50 items. And I'm like, that's cool. That's not enough to make money right. every week. I've seen people be like, oh, I have 50 items. And you're like, cool. You're going to make a sale every once in a while. Right. And they, they sell a couple of things and are excited, but then yeah. they're not making regular sales. And so that uh, it saps your enthusiasm. And Which it I really understand. Is like you got to muscle through. You got to muscle through and you got to make those numbers. Right. I mean... So so we made $1,500 gross this week, and we have 8,100, 8,200 items, and you're like, 
Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Right. You know, our stuff is weird and bizarre. Right. You know? And, you know, and the reason why, you know, that's crazy because there are people on the forum, on our yeah. forum, that that make as much as a we do a week With or a more. With a fraction of what we And have. they may have 1,200 items, but it's because of the types of items right. people have. So for me, it's like you either do like us and we're just like a big vacuum cleaner. We're just yeah. buy tables of stuff because it's cheap. Yeah. We have a low risk. Yeah. We're willing to deal with the volume. We have storage. Everything's great. Or there are people that just spend a lot more time picking. So yeah. they're out there scavenging. They're they're spending a significant amount of time out there finding things that they know are going to sell well. Yeah. yeah. They do a research before they buy it. You know, they, they pay up for items. Yeah. Because they know they can sell it faster, you know. So really, it really just depends where you want to put your time and money, right? You know, right. And so that's why we always talk about the scavenger equation. Yeah, it's like, it depends. Yeah, it's like time, quality of item, you know, uh, uh, quality of item and kind of item. How long you're willing to hold on to it? You know, some sellers seem to have these strict yeah boundaries they have on their self. Like if something doesn't sell in three uh, in months. I'm either going to get rid of it or I'm just going to like, you know, knock yeah. the price down so low that it's just going to sell and, you know, all of those things. And you have to figure out. Well, you know, it's interesting that conversation you had with Troy TSAT the other day where they were just full on for years close. They do it in volume. They know their stuff. And then 2019 happened and they were like, yeah, we need to change our plan. So, you know, Plus, he got a full-time job. So his equation changed for now. You know, it might it might go back. And, and same with us. For a long time, we were like, we're full-on clothes. It's vintage clothes. That's what it is. That's what we're interested in. And then we were like, we're not interested in that right now. Yeah. Let's change it. And we still go back. Like, I, we, I listed a bunch of clothes last week. I have a pile of clothes for her to do because we found cool stuff. But that's not the only thing we're doing. So it just, it yeah, yeah, it always changes. So I will say this across the board for any platform, it's volume. It's always going to be volume. It doesn't have to be our size volume, but it's going to be more than 50 items. It's going to be more than 100 items. Like my mom has a small store. She has, I think she tries to keep it at 1,000. She's just one person in her basement and she's like, I got to have a thousand items to like make anything that makes sense. Right. That's just what it is. Yeah. So I wish we could give you, you know, I don't like, have a you know, definite answer. Like scientific answer. Yeah. Like you need 801 items to yeah. make X amount of dollars. It's just, right. yeah. You just have to start to uh, list items online. But I would say we talk, we have a mana of a festo on, on yeah. our website and it's basically the first goal should be 500. 500. Get right? to 500 and pass that. Because I think also the whole thing about 500, it's kind of an arbitrary number too. It's just like if you can find, photograph, and list 500 items, you're going to know, Yeah, I like this. This is fun. Right. Or I hate this. I don't want to do this for any reason at all. And so <laughs> that's a thing. That's really – it's more like a test. If you can get past 500 – you so 500 is a big number yeah. compared to like 50. Right. 50 seems like a lot, but 500, like you got to get to 500. Right. And if you don't get to 500, you're yeah. like, I got to do something else with my life. And, I can't stand this. And 500 items, too, is another test to see can you store yeah. in inventory right. and keep track of all that? A lot of people get to like 500 and they're like very this is a nightmare they're very disorganized yeah and they're like i can't find me some people get to 8,000 without an inventory i don't know anyone like that we have, we have an inventory now we're okay we have, we, look i sell entire days worth of stuff that have inventory numbers on them because we've been uh, working on and in, in, i'm like wow now. this is awesome i think we're up to what been like 79 or something like that it's right? been 79 yep about. so and we're probably 75 percent and i started through. so i started doing inventory myself right. which is very fast so i'm like oh i don't have to pay someone to do this um which is good because some of the bins are complicated you're like there's all kinds of right. stuff that I, I don't even know how to explain what this is so yeah i actually enjoy doing inventory yeah because you get through a bin and you're like i did something yeah. i accomplished a goal <laughs> 
But I do think that just to kind of anyway. yeah wrap up this question. Wrap up this question. I think that there are two ways to sell. There's like I want to quit my job. I need steady income. You know. Yeah. Then you kind of do right. it the way we do it, or other people in the form yeah. do it, which is constant scavenging, constant scavenging, constant putting stuff up new, and constant selling and sh- shipping. It's yeah. a job, people. It's a job. Period. It's a job. But another way to do it, and I think that's what these like. Online, you know, the like TV ads are about for Poshmark and Movement Makari. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. like a making bits of money here and there. We all have a bunch of junk in our house. If you don't, haven't touched it in six months, just sell it. And yeah. you're just making a little bit of cash so you can fill up the car right. or buy, buy something groceries. Buy something cool that yeah. you might actually Which is how use. we started. Yeah, I mean, so it's not about you're going to make a living and have a whole inventory. Right. You're just being efficient. Like I'm reading right, right now, uh, I was kind of reading a forum post that someone put up. Yeah. Cat mom. Yeah. And she's just cat like, mom. I'm a cat mom. I'm so overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that's out there. Right. Like she's like, someone just moved to my neighborhood and they're basically just putting all of their belongings and black trash bags on the street <gasps> to be thrown in the landfill. That's insane. And she's oh like God. opening up the bags and there's like all these clothes and shoes and all this stuff that she's going to sell. Right. She'll pick through it. But it would just be thrown away. And <sighs> and crazy. just, I don't know. That's another thing that some people like doing is just being efficient. And right. Just, you're making money, but you're also just kind of helping the world from like not having stuff thrown in I the I mean, garbage. the fact that someone just, and we've seen this before, totally. Sorry. This is like the longest answer ever. Um People throwing stuff in the garbage, you're like, yeah. just donate it. So if like that person that's throwing away all their clothes just because I guess they don't want to deal. Yeah, they don't have it. time. If they see that ad on TV right. for Poshmark yeah. and decide, oh, I could just sell this stuff. Right. Like that's a big win, I think, yeah. in my mind for the, for those of us that care about right. like – like, let's be more efficient as a country. You know, yeah. like, if we want to make this country great again, let's be like the people were in the 30s where, like, right. you save everything and you, you don't waste. Like You're efficient that, and thrifty. And... Like, let's start with that. Like, yeah. uh, you know, we could, like, become so much of a wealthier country if we just didn't throw stuff away. Like, don't much. throw usable clothes right. in the actual oh garbage. Become, what are you talking about? This has become a diatribe. So, yeah. Anyway, so anyway, I hope that yeah. that helps. That's that's all the calls we have this week. Okay, so uh, yeah, come to scavengerlife dot com. That's that's when I say we're on the, the a forum. forum. That's where we are. Uh, you know, we encourage anyone who is a new that comes over. We ask that you introduce yourself. That's always nice, yeah. just so people know what's who your story you are and what your story where are you? Is. What are you doing? And that it's not like a Facebook group, <laughs> which I guess is like you know where we all. Be like, good job. It's more just like if you have a question right. or if you want to share something. We're there to solve problems. The other, know? But the other thing too, honestly, about people introducing themselves and being like, this is how I'm doing it. This is how I want to do it. Right. Everybody's doing something different. Right. There have been several people this week who've introduced themselves and we're all like, what are you doing? Right. How and, did you do that? And people ask you a lot yeah. of questions, not because really they're skeptical, but just because we're all trying to We're all trying to figure it out. Uh, you can call... And leave a question or comment like our, that gentleman did. Our voicemail line is 540-407-8486. Yep, we're here every Monday morning, sometimes Sunday night, and Wednesdays, our friend, he keeps doing it. We love him, Steve. Uh, he does his What's Sold uh, at, at video, and it's great for anyone who's trying to see what kind of stuff can be sold. You know, He sells all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, You can see my other podcast with you my sister. You can see it. It's a video, shampooandbooze.com. Uh, we're on YouTube, youtube.com slash shampoo and booze. We talk about Airbnb design. People right. send us their Airbnb short-term rentals and we pick apart what they're doing, what yeah. they're doing right and right. what they're doing wrong. Yeah, we say in a lot of Airbnbs when we travel because we just like having a kitchen and like yeah, it, a kitchen, more of a homey. Number one. And we're just always surprised. I am not a part of that podcast, but I'm always <laughs> a surprise at like the low effort people put into <laughs> Providing just like a decent space. Look, like, most people who send us their places already listen to our podcast, so they know that they need to have like a right. certain level of quality, which right. is awesome. But 
Look, the last one we we stayed in, we we took a trip, a work trip, and we were like, "What is going on in Vermont in this listing yeah. in Brattleboro, Vermont?" Yeah. So yeah, I would actually love to do a review of their place, but shampooandbooze.com. Yep. Check it out. It's another um, thing to watch during the week. Okay, this podcast is ending in three, two, two one. one. Sell trash and be free. That's right.